So hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us via Zoom today. Um, I just want to personally congr congratulate every single one of you uh, for being admitted into HWS. Um, to make this session a little bit as beneficial as possible, um, we encourage everyone to enable their cameras. Um, however, we do ask that you could keep your microphones on mute um, just so that we could um, get all of the excess, um, mute all of the excess noise as well. Um, we are, um, all the questions should be submitted via chat um, and I will make sure to get through all of them. Um, so before we get started, um, I'm going to do a couple of introductions with me and a couple of fellow students that are here on this Zoom as well. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Lelaine Vergara. I am a current senior here at the colleges. Um, I'm also a senior intern here, so I might have interviewed some of you um, for your um, admissions interview um, the, for the past couple of months. Um, in addition to that, I'm from Los Angeles, California. I am majoring in economics with double minors in media society and American studies. I'm involved in a couple different things on campus. So that includes um, the campus activities board. Uh, I have done research with the American studies department. Um, I'm part of Greek life, um, a couple different things um, that we could definitely talk about throughout this um, session. Um, one significant thing that I have also been part of is I was one of the two orientation coordinators um, for to help welcome the class of 2024 um, last year. Um, I am also here with um, two other students, I believe. I'm not sure if Colton is on as well. Um, two other students, so Lauren Early and Stewie Falso. Um, so if you guys could, um, could introduce yourselves. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Stewie Falso. Uh, I'm from Manlius, New York, which is right outside of Syracuse. I'm a junior here at the colleges. I'm a double major in economics and history with a minor in entrepreneurial studies. Um, besides um, in admissions, I'm the head of Laughlin Ambassador. I am involved in um, Greek life. I'm the uh, treasurer of my fraternity. Uh, I'm a part of HWS Leeds. And I'm also the captain of the Hobart cross country team on campus. Um, and I've worked in admissions uh, since my first year. I worked, I was a summer intern over the summer. So I had a lot of fun with that. But with that, I'll hand it over to Lauren and she can tell you a little about herself. Thanks guys. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Early. I'm a sophomore. I'm originally from Northboro, Massachusetts. I'm a media and society major and a double minor in entrepreneurial studies in French. Um, along with Stewie, we are the co-head of Lachlan Ambassadors in the admissions office. Um, and outside of working there, I dance with our Kinetic Dance Collective. I play club tennis. I'm part of HWS Leeds, which is our leadership certificate program. I'm part of the Dreamcatchers Club and I was an orientation mentor this past summer. Um, and away from HWS, I am an intern with the Salisbury Cultural District um, in my hometown of Worcester, Mass. Um, really excited to have you guys here. Yeah, um, so thank you, uh, Stewie and Lauren. Um, we're we're going to start taking questions. If you have any questions, again, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but before we actually had a couple um, submissions from um, prior to the session, so we can just get started with those. Um, so with both um, Stewie and Lauren, um, just feel free to chime in to wherever um, you feel necessary. So um, what do students do on the weekend um, and do you have to party? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so I think at HWS, uh, there's a wide variety of things to do on the weekends. Um, you know, it's college, people will, will party. <laughs> But I myself um, have never found pressured, uh, you know, to go to a party on a weekend. Um, I think we have a very inclusive environment where everyone can kind of find their niche and sort of um, be able to um, find something to do. Uh, we have a cab on campus, which is like this uh, campus activity board, uh, which really provides a lot of different options for students to really get involved on the weekends and the kind of have fun in whichever way they feel is necessary. Yeah, um, there's definitely a lot of different options for you to be um, out and about on campus. Obviously it looks a little bit different because of COVID. Um, so that will definitely change up when you, if you do decide to come here um, in the fall. 
Um, and so the next following question um, relates to uh, dining options. So are there any options in the dining halls, um, in the dining halls if you have any allergies? Um, yeah, I can answer that. So I don't have um, allergies, but I am a vegetarian. And so there are, we have a whole station dedicated to just vegetarian food. Um, and then all of our menu options will have any necessary allergens listed right there. Um, so it'll say like warning contains peanuts or something like that. Um, we also have a special station at the dining hall called Simple Servings um, that has a whole list of common allergens that they make their food without. If any of you have any other dietary restrictions, maybe that are like religiously affiliated, um, they can also make food for you there. Um, but they're very accommodating in terms of being um, supportive of students' dietary needs. Um, and Simple Servings is definitely a great place um, if you do have allergies and they'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure that you have delicious food that um, fits your health needs. Yeah, and also regarding to dining, um, for first year incoming students, um, I'm not exactly sure if you guys are aware with the um, meal plans. Um, you will be put on the unlimited um, meal plan uh, for the first, for your first year. And so that kind of includes um, unlimited swipes into Saga, which is what Lauren was briefly talking about. And then you get some snack money um, to spend at the cafe um, at AVP, which is our little coffee shop, um, little pastry place. Um, and so there's a lot of different options for you to uh, find food and also um, if you do have different dietary restrictions. Um, we are getting a couple questions in the chat. So um, Stu and Lauren, if you want to answer the question, what are the pros and cons of being in a small town, like small town campus? Um, I can take that one. So one of the things that I really like about Geneva is that it has a very strong community feel to it. And so, you know, being within this community, since there is a very strong connection between HWS as a school and um, the town itself, you will definitely feel like a member of the community. Um, and you'll feel like a resident of the town, not just a college student um, who resides there only some of the year. Um, actually, one of my best friends lives in Geneva. And so, you know, a lot of times, I get to know like his family and so I will be walking around at the grocery store and I will see like his family friends or like his mom and dad and you know it's great because there's definitely always people that you know here um, and that's great because you will feel work welcomed you will feel like that warm sense. Um, I would say also you know it is a small town so if you want to get out and you know do some other things maybe on the weekends there's a ton of day trips that you can take. Um, students like to go to Ithaca, Rochester, um, and Syracuse. Those are all about 45 minutes away. So even though we are in like sort of a college town, um, you can get out and go towards the city. Those also have major airports. Um, so if you're a student who needs to fly in, transportation um, from the airport back to HWS is pretty easy. Um, but there is definitely a lot to do around here. Um, but don't be afraid to get out of Geneva and go a little bit further. There's also tons of like super fun state parks. I know Stewie is from Manlius, so he can also probably speak to some of the great things that there is to do around here. Yeah, um, so one of the next following questions is how prevalent is Greek life? Uh, I can talk about that. Um, I am involved in the Greek life. Um, I really did not come to college thinking I was going to join Greek life. Um, wasn't in my, my master plan, but as you guys will find wherever you guys end up, you usually don't follow your master plan. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, Greek life is definitely, um, it's, it's, at, it's like, you know, it's around, but I wouldn't say it like has a, a hold on the campus where you would ever feel pressured to uh, join a Greek organization. Um, I think it's there for people who want it, but again, it's not something that I've never, that anyone has ever had like pressure to join a Greek organization in my opinion, which is why I think it's so great because, you know, you don't have to, you can, but you, again, you don't have to. Um, but yeah, uh, if there's any more questions about uh, Greek life, definitely don't hesitate to ask. 
Yeah, no, definitely. So there's a lot of different options for you um, here on campus. Um, we did get another question um, that was sent to me. Um, I know all of us kind of have um, different experiences, especially with the admissions process when we first applied to HWS. So um, if any of you guys want to answer the what makes HWS different from other small liberal arts colleges? I can take this one. Um, I think uh, really in my college search process, I pretty much only looked at small liberal arts colleges. So um, I ended up here for a reason. Uh, the big, really big difference for me was I really fell in love. I'd say the three, I had like three big things. Uh, the first one is probably the town. Uh, we talked about small town a little bit earlier, but I really just fell in love with Geneva. I loved how it was on the lake. Uh, I mean, it, you really can't beat it, especially during the warmer months. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous and, you know, nothing beats jumping in the lake after long day classes, like, trust me. Um, and I think uh, I love the food downtown. If it, you guys have ever tried Frybird or Char, like that's that's my go-to. Um, and I, so yeah, number one, I fell in love with Geneva. Uh, number two was career services. Um, I loved the, how, I love the emphasis on career services here at the colleges. Um, I think they do a really good job at, you know, placing students somewhere after graduation. Um, and that was something that was really attracted to, that I was really attracted to. Um, and the third thing was uh, when I visited the school, uh, I took, I think, two tours here when I was looking. Um, there was, I noticed when walking around campus um, and, you know, some of you guys just during COVID, it's definitely hard. I don't know if you guys have been to campus or if you visited over the summer, but, um, you know, I love seeing like people like waving to each other and like everyone looked very happy, like smiling and other colleges I visited you know, I didn't get that same sort of vibe. Um, so I really liked that people just seem very happy on campus. And uh, I just, I, I consider myself someone who likes to smile a lot. And I saw that a lot around campus. So I really like that. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, I think my experience is just a little bit different. Um, HWS was the smallest smallest school and the farthest school that I have ever applied to from all the colleges. Um, I did apply to bigger universities, especially um, the Cal like a lot of the California public schools. Um, public universities are um, pretty top tier, like um, UC Berkeley, UCLA, and all those other schools. So I did apply to them. I did get into them, but I think for me, I was just looking for something a little bit different. Um, what HWS has to offer is because we're so small, um, there are so many opportunities that are there for you um, that you're not competing with tens and thousands of students. Um, I always use the example of um, one of my research, one of my research articles that is currently in the publish publishing process, which is super exciting. Um, like oh, every time I talked with my friends about that who do go to bigger universities like UCLA, USC and stuff like that, um, they don't have a published article under their name, which is like kind of crazy because if you think about it, we are, we do have undergraduate level research or graduate level research that you can do as an undergrad, um, which ultimately ends up in you having a published article at the end, sometimes in an academic journal. So there's a lot of different opportunities there. Um, in addition to that, with smaller liberal arts schools, I think a really big thing is um, just the small class sizes. I think you do see the benefit of having a class that's like 15 students, 10 students. Um, I always use the example again of um, last semester, one of my smallest classes was five students. And you really do get that individualized education where if you are having a hard, hard time like conceptualizing an idea or wanting, wanting to talk through um, something that's a little bit more complex, you have that opportunity to fully understand things like that in your courses. Um, but anyways, um, so following the next couple of questions, uh, we do have a couple more. Um, so how is the transition from home to HWS? I think that that is one of those things that can be very personal for people. Um, I think that kind of depends person to person, but the great thing about HWS and similar sort of to that question of like, why HWS that Lillane pointed out is like, you get so much individualized attention here. Um, you know, there's, if you're struggling, like there's people that might notice and reach out and by people, I mean, you know, staff members, faculty members. Um, so you do have so many resources here 
coming in, you're going to be paired with two orientation mentors. I'm an orientation mentor. You know, every time I see my students that I mentored around, you know, I'm asking like, how are you guys doing? Like, how's the transition? Is there anything that I can help you with? It's always because it's such a supportive and small and tight knit community. Um, you're going to have a lot of support. Also, you know, we have the counseling center, um, which is free and confidential counseling for students who want, you know, might be having a hard time adjusting to college and want to talk to someone about that. Um, your first year seminar, um, that is the one required class here. I actually also lived in a living learning community. So everyone that was in my first year seminar lived on my floor with me. So we got to be a very tight knit group. And our professor was also part of that tight knit group. She was our advisor until we chose our major. That's for every FSEM. Um, your advisor, your first year seminar professor will be your advisor until you choose your major. So they meet you during orientation. They're gonna meet you that first day um, and they're gonna get to know you. So they can become someone that can help you transition. They're going to help you um, emotionally and also academically. You know, they really hold your hand and kind of walk you through those first couple of assignments to make sure that you're transitioning well um, to doing college level work. We also run this program called Kaleidoscope, which is sort of um, an extended orientation for students. Um, so that gives people extra time to, you know, still be going through that transition. And, you know, the, the real truth is that the first, my mom told me this, the first semester of college is going to be like the most transformative few months of your life. She was like, when you came back, you were a totally new person. Um, so that's really great, but there are also difficulties that come with that, you know, moving away from home can be difficult, but there's so many resources and you will flourish so much here and find so many people that are similar to you. And then you, you know, me and my roommate, we would talk about those things. I'd be like, I miss my friends. And she'd be like, go FaceTime them. And so there's definitely a great support network that will help HWS feel like home to you. So it'll be great because you'll have two homes. You'll have home where you live, um, you know, for your whole childhood and then home here where you will have people that start to feel like family. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the transition for everyone um, is going to be something that you won't experience back at home. It's going to be, um, you'll get to learn a little bit more about yourself, about how you navigate being a little bit more independent on your own. Um, I always tell the funny story that I actually didn't know how to do laundry up until I got to college. So definitely a really big um, transition for me, even coming from California. Um, so the next following question that we have is, um, could someone talk about graduation requirements or core classes? Um, actually, I think I could talk about this. Um, since I'm graduating, I guess we can talk a little bit more about graduation. Um, so for HWS, you are required, um, we do the eight goal system. Um, and so instead of for graduation requirements, we don't do the typical um, like general education requirements. So rather, um, rather than like, for example, if we did like a science goal, our science goal is not the typical like um, science requirement. So for example, it's, I think it's, our goals are scientific inquiry, quantitative reasoning, um, artistic process, um, ethical judgment, cultural differences. Um, so they're more of competencies rather than just checking off boxes. So for example, if you are looking into scientific inquiry and you're not a science person, um, you don't have to take chemistry or you don't have to take intro to bio. Um, I, for example, took, um, took a class called Suns and Planets and all we did was learn about the solar system. So it wasn't like an intense um, uh, science class where you are doing like all the biology stuff or the chemistry stuff. Um, or um, another thing for like another goal is like quantitative reasoning. That's a big one for a lot of people. Um, especially if you're not a math person, you don't have to take calculus. I know they have like uh, different classes like um, math for the informed citizen, which is technically not really a math class, or um, I think data with storytelling is another one. Um, so there's a broad range of um, different classes that you can take. And so with that, um, because we don't follow the general like ed system, um, it kind of aligns with a little bit more of the liberal arts uh, structure where you're allowed to um, kind of go outside and explore a little bit more about um, what you're interested in or different topics that you might be um, like you might want to study. 
Um, and so it also depends. So besides the eight goals, it also depends on your major. So depending on what your major is, um, the classes will be different. Um, there are two types of programs here at HWS. So the disciplinary and interdisciplinary. Um, for example, uh, disciplinary programs are all the classes that you have to take through one department. Um, for example, you would see that with um, classes like the econ department. So with the econ department, all the classes to graduate, you have to take within the econ department um, so that you would major into that when you get your degree. Um, another example for interdisciplinary is media and society. With media and society, um, you can take classes in different departments and it would still count towards your major, towards graduation. Um, so I'm not exactly sure if that kind of answers all the questions for that one. Um, but we do have a little bit more questions here. Um, could you talk about study abroad? Um, does, did any of you guys study abroad? I was, I'm supposed to be in Ireland right now, but okay. uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you wanna talk about, uh, have you studied about it? I don't know. No, I have not. But do you wanna talk a little bit about the process of applying for study yeah, abroad? I, I, okay. Yeah, I almost went. Um, Yes, so study abroad here is very popular. I think us three not study abroad is kind of kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, obviously, with COVID-19, uh, things are definitely a little bit different, but um, I know about 60, when, without COVID, about uh, two thirds of the uh, school does study abroad in some capacity. Um, honestly, because our program is so strong, uh, we've been ranked really highly by the prison review we we're number one for maybe a couple years ago i think we we're dropped we we're dropped down to nine but still pretty high um and you know honestly like getting that international experience is something that the school really values so they make it really easy for you to study abroad um applying is not hard you um, basically write like a two-page essay about why you think you'd be a good fit for their program and then uh they get back to you you put like your top three choices um, actually, it might be five. I think it's top five choices. Um, and the beauty of it is when you go abroad, your financial aid follows you. So it's never more expensive. Sometimes it's actually cheaper because you don't have to pay for a meal plan. Um, and there's definitely different types of like abroad programs. Uh, to start off, we have, we have three week programs, which are done over January and the summer. So if you don't want to commit to a full semester, that's really popular, especially for athletes. Um, and then we have the traditional semester long program, but in those semester long programs, some of them can be more, uh, um, some of them are like faculty led. So like you're with faculty, you're with sort of like an HWS like cohort. That's what my uh, Ireland trip was supposed to be like. Um, so I was gonna go, I think with about 20 or 30 different students and there are two HWS faculty members that were coming with us. I think they're from the English department. Um, so that's different than uh, some of our programs are more like exchanged. So you just, you know, if you're taking, if you're studying abroad in, let's say like Amsterdam, you know, you might just be dropped off there. There might be a couple other HWS students there, but uh, for the most part, you're a little more on your own. You have a little more independence, uh, depending on what you're looking for. Um, it, you know, students sort of vary in what type of programs they like the best. Um, I was someone who's kind of, you know, I, I'm not a big traveler, so I didn't want to like be completely on my own in like Europe for the first time. Uh, so I felt more comfortable with going with some a big group of HWS students and uh, some professors. So that was definitely the right choice for me. Didn't get to go, but um, I hope that uh, if you guys come here, that you would definitely take advantage of that program because it's really it's really great to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Um... So a, a couple other questions that we are getting. Um, I don't know if anyone anyone wants to talk about it, but good could so someone said could I bring a car and how is first year parking? So I have my car here. I you can have a car here all four years. Um, I did not have one my first semester of my first year, which really wasn't a big deal. I mean, if you have a car, you can bring it, and that's great. Um, but if you don't have a car, then it's totally fine to just, you know, a lot of people do have cars, so you can hitch rides with friends. We have a shuttle on campus um, that comes around every night starting at 7 p.m. It brings you around campus and also to a few places in the surrounding area. Um, we have zip cars, um, if you guys know what those are, so you can kind of like rent the car. Um, so 
In terms of parking, we have a lot of parking. The nice thing about having a really big campus in um, and a lot of space is we have parking. So if you live in Jackson Potter Reese JPR, or if you live in Cheryl, there's a lot right there and there's kind of overflow parking for that lot um, in the Odell's parking lot, which is a little bit further away, but there is parking right there outside um, your room. My, my car, I can see it from here. It's right here in the back parking lot. I'm just a sophomore and it's right here um, behind my room. So there is a lot of opportunities for parking. Yeah. Um, so another question that we're getting um, relates to a little bit about career services and kind of professional development and stuff. So are there alumni, alumni connections and is it easy to get a job or go to graduate school afterwards? Uh, I just had a meeting with Career Services last week, so I would love to talk about them. Uh, they do a phenomenal job here. That's part of the reason why I came here. They have um, to talk about your question, I think, involved alumni. Uh, we have a database of over 5,000 alumni who um, they're not alumni that I like to say were like annoying. They're like alumni who have like offered their services to the school. Uh, they want to talk to students. There are some parents in there as well. Um, they're completely at your disposal. Um, you can reach out to them. There's like it, in career services, there are like three like computers and it's just like, it's the database where you can like look up if you're interested in being a veterinarian, like you can look it up and you can find a, um, you can find like, I'm sure there's at least one Asia who who does that. So um, that's really great. And then for job placement, uh, like, you know, from your first year, you can start meeting with career services. That's my like, number one advice, like you just go in there, even if you have no idea what you want to do, just let them know that and they'll help you out. Even from, you know, telling them that um, they have like career surveys that you can complete and things like that, that might give you an idea of what you want to do. I mean, all transparency, I don't even really know exactly what I want to do yet. Like I have some ideas, but um, you know, that's the beauty of studying liberal arts is that, you know, you really don't need to have like a set plan. Um, which is why I really like, I really like the, how career services doesn't like, you know, first year you need to like know exactly what you're going to do. That's ridiculous. Um, they, they help, you know, students at any path along the way, you know, if you come in, you want to be a lawyer, they'll help you with that. If you come in, you have no idea what you're trying to do, they'll help you with that. They're, they just, um, they do a good job just catering to all types of students. And I think that really helps with our job placement after graduation, which I don't have the exact like number, but I know recently we were ranked like, I know number one in New York State for job placement after graduation, which is really impressive. Yeah, I just have to jump in there that I am the queen of finding alums on LinkedIn and messaging them. And I just had like the best experience. Um, I was applying for an internship that was offered through an alum. So career services will actually send us emails and say like, alum Lauren Early is offering like this internship. And so I applied to the internship and I found the alum on LinkedIn and messaged him. And he was so supportive. He was like, I would love to have another HWS grad here. Um, he gave me his personal phone number. He was like, you can call me. We can talk about this opportunity. I'm going to advocate for you. Um, so, you know, that feeling of HWS being a community extends even when you're not on campus, which I think is fantastic. And like Stewie said, that career, um, the career services team, their process is so individualized um, that they'll really meet you where you are. I definitely came in and I was like, I don't really know what I wanna do. And they were very supportive. Um, and I think career services here is definitely something that sets us apart. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think with any office on campus, I always like to say that, um, especially with career services and any um, any other place here, is that if you ever need help, you just have to ask for it and look for it and kind of, um, and, and it'll always be there. Um, they're always there to help you with anything that you need. Um, and if that's professional development, academic help, um, mental health, anything, um, the colleges are there for you. Um, and so, this was, this is actually going to be our very last question for today's session. Um, so what would you change about HWS? I would make college longer because I'm almost a junior and I'm getting scared and I don't want to leave.
Again. Huh? Oh, <laughs> um, I think for me, one thing that I would change about HWS, but I feel like it's kind of not not really changing because for me, since I'm from California, it's always just so cold here. One thing that I would change would be location, but at the same time, if you do change the location of HWS, it's not going to be HWS anymore. So, so it's kind of that double end thing. Um, and Stewie, did you think of anything yet? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean. I think probably, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it could be a little bit more. It would be nice to use the lake like all year round. So maybe if it was warmer, but like, that's like a whole, like, that's a whole other issue. Like I'm, that's not HWS's fault. So I won't get yeah, into I wish that like, we didn't leave just as soon as it gets warm enough to swim yeah. in the lake. Yeah. Working some summer over the summer was like the best decision I ever made. I would literally leave work, walk right down to the dock, go swimming and then go home. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It was awesome. Yeah, and so that's all the time that we have for today. Um, there will be other um, future sessions with other students as well. Um, Stewie and Lauren, do you mind putting your email into the chat? Yep, I can write that. Um, just in case if you'd like to connect with them um, directly, if you have any other questions that you'd like to ask them, I'll also put my um, email in the chat if you do have any following questions. Um, but thank you for joining, joining us today and best of luck on making your final decision. Yeah, nice meeting everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you all. Hopefully we'll see you all here in September.